Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to Faith Building Zoom Scripture Reveal. You can find this teaching on youtube.com or my channel, Minister Herbert Pankey. Right Belief, Right Behavior teaching series. Non-believer, let Jane's letter ignite faith within you toward Christ Jesus. Believer, let Jane's letter boost your faith to maturity in Christ Jesus. Today we'll be doing part three, Faith and Endurance, James chapter one, uh, 1 to 18. We'll be picking it up at verse 11. Right belief, right behavior. New Living Translation, James chapter 1, verse 11. The hot sun rises and the grass withers. The little flower droops and falls, and its beauty fades away. In the same way, the rich will fade away with all of their achievements. This verse reveals, James describes a common occurrence in the Middle East. Morning is often welcomed by colorful desert flowers bursting with the cool, bursting from the cool night. Flowers' death is sudden as the hot sun rises. This withering and fading of wealthy people is as sudden as the death of the wild flowers. Death always interrupts. Life is uncertain. Disaster is possible at any moment. Poor people would be considered unworthy. Poor people should be glad that riches mean nothing to God. Rich people, wealth is easily lost. Rich people should be glad that wealth means nothing to God. Find true wealth by developing your spiritual lives. You find true wealth not by financial assets. James is making sure that believers, both poor and rich, see themselves in the same light before God. And please read Galatians 3.28 and Colossians 3.11. James calls his readers to find hope in God's eternal promises. New Living Translation, verse 12. God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterwards, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. This verse reveals Christians continue in spiritual training as they patiently endure testing that will bring maturity and completeness. Today's trials will seem like training when we face tomorrow's challenges. Way to get into God's inner circle, love him, stay faithful even under pressure. Keep in mind, these are successes uh, there are successes along the way. Spiritual progress has its mile markers. Trials of this life are contained in this life. Someday the test will be over. God's goal, long-term maturity and completeness, eternal, the crown of life. Believer who patiently endures by trusting God will have a life that, though not full of glory and honor, is still truly abundant, joyful, and victorious. The source of strength and encouragement in trial in times of trials, looking forward to what wonderful looking forward to that wonderful reward, looking forward to the one who will who will present it to us. Christians can consider themselves truly blessed. No matter what their reward, no matter what their outward circumstances, because they have been promised the crown of life. New Living Translation, verse 13. And remember, when you are being tempted, do not say, God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong, and he never tempts anyone else. This verse reveals we must have a correct view of God in order to continue doing, continue during times of trial. God's view, trials and temptations always present us with choices, wants us to make good choices, not evil ones. Hardships can produce spiritual maturity and lead to eternal benefits if endured in faith. Tests can also be failed, can, can give in to temptation. When we fail, often use all kinds of excuses and reasons for our actions. When we fail, most dangerous of these is to say, God is tempting me. Crucial for us to remember that God tests people for good. 
He does not tempt people for evil. During temptation, we can see God's supreme power and authority in permitting Satan to tempt us in order to refine our faith and help us grow in our dependence on Christ. Instead of persevering, we may give in or give up in the face of temptation. We might even rationalize that God is at fault for sending such a trying experience and thus blame God for, for our failure. From the beginning, it has been a natural human response to make excuse and blame others for sin. See Genesis uh, chapter three, verse 12 to 13. Please read. Person who makes, who makes excuses is trying to shift blame to something or someone else. The Christian accepts responsibility for his or her wrongs. Christian confesses wrong. Christian asks God for forgiveness. Because God is never tempted to do wrong, he cannot be the author of temptation. James is arguing against the pagan view of the gods were good and evil coexisted. James is arguing against the pagan view of the gods where good and evil coexisted. God does not wish evil on people. God does not cause evil. God does not try to trip, trip people up. God never tempts anyone. So a question may be rightly asked, if God really loves us, why doesn't he protect us from temptation? And here's the answer. A God who kept us from temptation would be a God unwilling to allow us to grow. In order for a test to be effective, to be an effective tool for growth, it must be capable of being failed. God actually proves his love by protecting us in temptation instead of protecting us from temptation. And please read 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. New Living Translation, verse 14. Temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us and drag us away. This verse reveals, thinking about temptation, since God allowed temptation, he must also be the source of temptation. Excuse their sin by saying that God was at fault. James correction, temptations come from within, from the attraction of our own evil desires. James highlights individual responsibility for sin. Desires can be either fed or starved. If the desire itself is evil, we must deny its wish. It is up to us with God's help. If we encourage our desires, they will soon become actions. The blame for sin is ours alone. The kind of desire James is describing here is a desire out of control. It is selfish and seductive. James does not take Satan off the hook by placing responsibility for temptation on our desires. We may be led by our desires, but it is the devil beyond behind the impulse when we are going in an evil direction. Temptation comes from evil desires within us, not from God. Temptation begins with an evil thought. Temptation becomes sin when we dwell on that thought. Temptation allow, temptation when we allow it to become an action. Temptation becomes sin when we allow it to become an action. Sin grows more destructive the more we let it have its way. The best time to stop a temptation is before it is too great or moving too fast to control. New Living Translation, verse 15. These desires give birth to sinful actions, and when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. Temptations process. Evil desires lead to evil actions. When you yield to temptation, our sin sets deadly events into motion for evil action led to death. There is more to stopping sin than just stop sinning. The damage has been done. Deciding to sin no more may take care of the future, but it does not heal the past. Healing must come through confession, repentance, and forgiveness. 
sometimes restitution must be made. New Living Translation, verse 16. So don't be misled, my dear brothers and sisters. Warning about, uh, this verse reveals, warning about deception, temptation to believe that God does not care. Temptation to believe that God won't help us. Temptation to believe that God may even be working against us. Temptation to believe we are alone. Temptation to distrust God and temptation to dare to accuse God for being the tempter. New Living Translation, verse 17. Whatever is good and perfect comes down from God our Father, who created all the lights in the heavens. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. How to keep from falling into temptation? Close relationship with God. Application of his word to daily life. Pattern will lead us to see clearly that every good and perfect gift is from above. Contrast to the view that God sends evil, James points out that there, that whatever is good and perfect comes to us from God above. We can be assured that God always wills the best for us, not good things today and bad things tomorrow. God's character is always trustworthy and reliable. God's character never changes. God's character never casts shifting shadows. Please read Malachi 3.6. Facts about God. Nothing can block his goodness from reaching us. He is undaunted by our inconsistencies and unfaithfulness. Satan's plan process temptation. Okay. Satan's has a plan and process temptation. Three specific parts of the temptation listed by Matthew. Specific parts are familiar to us because we face the same kind of temptations. Temptation is often the combination of a real need and a possible doubt that creates an appropriate desire. Jesus demonstrates both the importance and effectiveness of knowing and applying scripture to combat temptation. Plan, plan of temptation. This is Satan's plan to get us to doubt. And you can read in Genesis chapter three, verse one, when Satan was speaking to Eve. Discouragement, Genesis chapter three, verse two and three, Eve was speaking. Diversion, Genesis chapter 3, verse 5, Satan was speaking. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. Defeat, Genesis chapter 3, verse 7 and 8, and delay of obedience. Please read Genesis chapter 3, 1 to 13. Process of temptation. Matthew chapter 4, 1 to 4, physical need, which was hunger. Please read Matthew chapter 4 verse 1 to 11. I'm going to read this again. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 to 4. Physical need was hunger. This is when Satan was tempting Jesus in the wilderness. Matthew chapter 4, verse 5 to 7, there was an emotional need, security. And Matthew chapter 4, verse 8 to 10, psychological need, significance, power, achievement. Psychological arising in the mind related to the mental and emotional state of a person. Those, these are the needs that every human being has. James chapter 1, verse 18, New Living Translation. He chose to give birth to us by giving us his true word. And we out of all creation became his prized possession. This verse reveals shining example of the good thing God gives is spiritual birth. We are saved because God chose to make us his own children. Spiritual birth is not by accident, is not because God had to, is a gift to all believers. And please read Romans uh, 12, 2, Ephesians 1, 5, Titus 3, 5, 1 Peter 1, 3, and also verse 23, and 1 John 3, 9. 
true word, the gospel, the good news of salvation, Ephesians 1.13 and Colossians 1.5. We hear about the gift of birth through the reading and preaching of the gospel, and we respond to it. We've covered part three, faith and endurance, James chapter one, verse 11 to 18. Get in and stay in Christ Jesus, not giving up or giving in. You can find this teaching on my YouTube channel, Minister Herbert Pankey, Right Belief, Right Behavior teaching series. Thanks for joining. God bless.